Polypede works here. So, as the Yamato cover story goes on, and as the Egghead arc goes on, I have noticed something very interesting about Yamato that not a lot of people talk about. Yamato presumably was the best devil fruit user in the entirety of the Beast Pirates. Let me explain. So, as we see the Goro say, right, the five elders, at least four of them are mythical Zoans, but all of them are Zoans. We don't know the exact nature of their abilities yet, but Occam's Razors would suggest that all their abilities are Zoan in nature. They have three forms. They have a human form, a beast form, and a hybrid form. So with that being said, four of them have monster forms that are rooted in Asian folklore, whereas Jupiter is just a sandworm, which is very modern fantasy western folklore very dnd esque so with that being said the interesting part about all their transformations is that all of them have haragamo the shrouds of clouds that you see around awakened zones or at least properly awakened zones because there is a difference there are two types of awakening so out of all the proper awakened zones you have these shrouds of clouds, these haragamo. I have made videos about how the color of the haragamo could reflect the nature of the user, which is turning out to be further and further more true as we go on, because all the awakened zones that we see in Egghead, all of their clouds are black. All their shrouds of mastery, their shrouds of clouds, their haragamo, they're all black, okay? So Jupiter, Warkery, Saturn, Nosjuro, all those guys, plus Lucian Kaku. All of them black clouds, and all of them are presumably evil characters with evil intentions. So all that adds up. But with Luffy, he has a white one, and Luffy does stand for liberty and freedom. So that makes sense. He has a very light and good personality. But this brings us back to Yamato. Yamato is the strongest Zoan fruit user in the Beast Pirates because she's the only one so far who seems to be an awakened Zoan. Because much like the Five Elders, both in her hybrid state and her full wolf form, we see a Haragamo-like structure around her. A Shroud of Mastery, a Shroud of Clouds. Though hers is a little bit wispier, it's a little bit different than, say, Luffy's or anyone else's. This could just be customization because I guess it's made to look more like an icy mist as opposed to full on clouds. So that's why I'm kind of on the fence as to say she's not awakened because it lines up too perfectly for what we've seen from the five elders. So I'm going with the idea that this presumably is just how her fruit Haragamo looks. This is just how it looks because it's associated with ice. So with all that being said, she is the first fully and properly awakened humanoid character in One Piece with a properly awakened mythical Zoan fruit. This is big for her. I don't know if giving her this stature is going to be important in the story going forward, but seeing as how she seems to have all the stats and makings of an important character, she has armored hockey, observation hockey, conqueror's hockey, and a good grasp on her dough fruit. I don't think a character like that is going to be wasted or even sidelined to the Grand Fleet because of how sparingly Oda gives these type of accolades out. They're only given out to very important characters if she is awakened, which Occam's Razor would suggest that she is because the simplest solution is most likely the right one. So in this situation, she is awakened on a higher level or has a higher understanding of her fruit than say Kaku and Lushi do because through her love of Wano and love of Odin wanting to be Odin because he exhibits so many qualities that she admires. The reason why I think she reached an awakening so early because her fruit is the guardian deity of Wano. So in loving Wano, she meshes very well body and mind with her fruit because the body portion, we know you are a child of Kaido. You were raised by his tutelage. So yeah, you have a body of steel. There's no problems there. And mentally, 
she is in the right place because she is a, a countryman, I guess you could say. So with that being said, it only makes sense that she would get to such a high level despite not having the experience of adventuring and fighting hard battles because again she most likely had to fight her father on a regular basis so that adds up that makes sense and i think that's just really cool to see when you start to piece things together because it is a blink and you'll miss it sort of thing or it's one of those things in which you don't have context for what you're seeing now but once you have further context in the future you start to piece things together to be fair though we don't know what exactly it means to have a Haragamo in all states, but presumably it's in port because Lushi and Kaku don't do it. Lushi and Kaku, especially Lushi, because we see it for Lushi, in Egghead, he has a normal hybrid state, and then he has the awakened state that looks like his hybrid state when he uses paper arts. It's like this weird, long, lanky variant of his hybrid state a bit longer i'd say than the life return version of him normally but it still is very odd and then kaku's well it looks no different from his normal hybrid state so seeing as how they have a presumably very small scope of their awakening it begs the question is yamato just better than both of them i think so especially seeing as how she has so many accolades out the gate with being the child of Kaido, having conquerors hockey, and so on and so forth. So I say this all to say that in the future, it's very likely that after her whole cover story is over, that she will be joining the main cast. Because I can't see from a narrative perspective why you would give her so much from the start only to deem her unimportant and this has been going on with a few characters that have popped up in around the yonko saga which a video about that coming soon but for now it's interesting that yamato is the only one in the organization that didn't solely rely on just hockey and physicality like say kaido and king did because kaido and king had no real investment in their devil fruits they only use them as a means to an end for the abilities that they receive from them. Kaido, more destructive power, flight, a bigger boost to his hockey imbued strikes, etc., etc. King, same thing, a range increase by manipulating his body by pulling his head back in a very freaky fashion and launching out his beak. And then, of course, he gains flight. Because one thing about this that kind of bothers me and i've been looking around i can't confirm it i remember a while ago i don't know if it's still up there the wiki said that lunarians can fly and i think they have been confused flight with like i guess long jumping or that weird levitation that one piece characters sometimes have but we've never seen him actually fly using his lunarian wings we've only seen him use the power of flight when becoming a dinosaur i would assume that's the whole reason why he has the power in the first place and further increases the parallel else between himself and kaido because both of them due to their abilities have the power of flight and of course queen is in the same boat because queen too is not a delphi user queen is a scientist who uses the wacky physiology of his delphi fruit to cram more stuff into his body so with all that being said yamato is the first person who not only has a strong body but has an incredible handle on hockey and has incredible investment in her dove fruit based on what we see her do and how she looks and not only that and this doesn't happen a lot but when it happens i think you should pay attention she's able to freeze things without assuming a transformed state so without becoming a wolf or a hybrid wolf she can use cryokinesis kind of like brooke which is super interesting because that's a very rare thing that you don't see a lot of mythical zones do. The only two accounts I can recall that are like this is with Orochi and with Marco. But with both of those cases, it's a bit of a caveat because you could say with Orochi, that ability to be decapitated in your human form but be okay could just be a preservation ability that's on all the time thanks to the snake snake fruit model Yamato no Orochi. It doesn't necessarily have to be a transforming thing. But with Yamato, the ice is completely divorced from anything 
about the wolf. It's something that the wolf projects. Kind of like with Kaido's uh, use of blast breath or flame clouds. We don't really see him use those abilities in his normal state on where he is transformed. So it's very interesting to see Yamato use cryokinesis in her normal form. Same thing with Marco. Marco has used blue fire in his human form. However, the caveat with that is the blue fire literally is a part of the phoenix's body the phoenix has fire instead of feathers you could say so that is more aligned with like say the partial transformation that you see chopper use or that you see sandra sonia use when she like has her snake ton out all the time after she's eaten her snake fruit so that's why i put him in that category so yeah that really puts yamato at the forefront and being the first one in the series like this a fully awakened humanoid zoan fruit user with a beast fruit and it makes a lot of sense because, of course, Awakening is the flavor of the day during Wano because Luffy awakens. But with all that being said, I can't wait to see what happens to Yamato in the future. And give me your thoughts.